hate living in the past and, and present. It's like yeah. whatever you visualize is really and truly what you're gonna materialize. Whatever yeah. you I'm, think I'm about. I'm sure when you started your stuff, you probably were like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have a pro. Yeah, check it out, man. This is your boy Akon, and right now you're tuned in to the Millionaire Student Show with my man, Sasha Governor. Yo, it's Rich the Kid on the Millionaire Student Show. Hi, I'm Ariane Celeste, and you're tuning in to the Millionaire Student Show. What's up, y'all? Tune in to the Millionaire Student Show with Andy Milanakis. Yo, yo, this your boy, Soldier Boy, and you're tuning in to the Millionaire Student Show with Sasha. Keep it locked right here. Ugh. We're on the Millionaire Student Show with Nick Kaswani and we're actually hanging out in Beverly Hills right now and uh, if you don't know Nick, Nick is 20 years old, uh, Nick is also, in fact, uh, Nick is known as Big Nick on YouTube and social media, uh, Nick is a comedian famous for his funny videos on the Vine Network where he built it up to millions of followers and subscribers and also on YouTube. Um, after undergoing several surgeries on his legs, ankles and hips, Nick you know, needed a distraction and he's turned that distraction and pain into major prosperity in his life. So from the mess to his message and that's what we're going to emphasize and talk about um, you know, throughout this entire video. Nick, there's certain people that obviously don't know who you are. You obviously have over 1 million fo followers, 1.1 million on Instagram, over 1 million on YouTube, and um, you had 3.8 million YouTube views on just one video that you were really passionate about. Um, you know, also there's many people right now that are tuning in from different countries and continents around the world that um, either don't know who you are, or maybe they've seen you, but they really don't know your story. They don't know the background. They don't know the ins and outs of who you really are. Um, you know, firstly, who do, what do you represent? And, and if you could tell us a bit about your story. Sure, yeah. Uh, what's up, guys? For everyone who doesn't know who I am, let's get to know each other now. Uh, but no, who I am, basically, I'm just all about like making funny videos, um, just making good content, just having fun with it, you know? Uh, and I just like everything else as a result of it, of just me like li following my passion, uh, started to just kind of come all into one little, uh, I would say, like circle that was like the foundation of like me knowing what I wanted to do with my life. So I just, yeah, I just did something I loved and it turned out to be successful. Um, but I, the reason why I was successful is because I didn't give up. And uh, like, I guess the key thing for me was like just being consistent and, and knowing what the people want and just like staying very in tune with like what like the social media culture wants to see, you know? So whether that's like either following trends or just making original content or just being able to wait to like really get the viewer or the person behind the screen connect with you is a huge win because those are the people that are going to be, you know, repeat buyers when you drop merch or those are going to be the people that are the first ones to like your videos, send it to their friends. It's really all about creating an engaged core fan base that feels like they can really relate with you or connect with you in a way that others wouldn't. Yes, yeah, so we both have one thing in common. And um, it's kind of ironic that um, you mentioned that, you know, was it your mom that's from Africa? Yeah, so my mom's from Africa, but um, my parents are Indian as well. So he's also yeah. Indian African, so I'm with a fellow brother today, yeah, you know. crazy, man. So your mom's from Uganda, yeah. and your dad's from India. No, North. my dad, okay, so my dad was born in America, but um, his parents were born in India. So you got a bit of both. Yeah. Africa and uh, you know Indian blood in you and that's kind of crazy because yeah. I have the exact same yeah and I look I look nothing like it either yeah the funniest without part. a doubt so um, so coming from you know that background because Africa and India is both third world yeah um, you know and your parents obviously moved out here well they your, your dad was born here yeah um, but your mom was born in Africa yeah um, what 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 was that transition like from third world to first world because you know your mom's still thinking third world until she moves here and settles in and now she obviously has you, but you know, you're still thinking first world because that's the entire environment, but your mom's trying to pull you back in third world. Yeah. Um, so I, your question is like, what was it like for them growing up? Or yeah. what was it like for me? No, what, because what is for, for, them, for them and what effect did it have over you? Sure, sure. Uh, so my parents actually, 
were very poor when they first met each other. They were both going to medical school in Boston. And uh, yeah, both my parents did not have a lot of money. Um, then as they you know, graduated college, my dad kind of worked his way up uh, towards like, uh, you know, his, the whole medical field. My dad's now in, uh, uh, he, he works a lot with healthcare. He's like vice president of ambulatory healthcare over at Scripps uh, Medical Clinic. But you know, it took him a long time to kind of build up and you know, uh, just kind of get to the top. But uh, now my dad is doing fine. My mom's doing, you know, pretty well off. But it was just, it was definitely interesting to to like grow up and see them kind of climb the ladder. You know, because when I was born, they were both still really poor. And then I think around like, um, I think it was around like, mm, like middle school is when they started to really like kind of, you know, have a lot of money and then high school, uh, you know, they definitely were like chilling, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it was very cool and very inspiring to see them go from nothing to something. Uh, you know, my dad would tell me stories like um, of how he would have to like, you know, uh, look for like shoes in the, in the trash and wear them to school and then people would make fun of him for it, you know, and then like, uh, he also told me a story about how his parents had like this emergency money of like $20 that was on the table that you could only take for emergencies. But my dad was bullied in school because he would be wearing like, you know, worn out shoes or shoes that were like basically not good looking because they, yeah. they were dirty. And, and those and stories, you know, those stories back in the days, we don't hear them nowadays. There's not enough pain nowadays. I mean, exactly. nowadays, you know, the parents are taking care of the kids or the kids are just, they have so much of opportunity to take care of themselves. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, disability is, um, is a strong factor that hinders a lot of people. And, um, you know, hinders them in a way, basically, you know, from achieving their desired goals. And when I look at that, um, that, that's something that you came up with. But obviously, you didn't ask for it. You know, you were just born into it. Yeah. Uh, or born with it. How did you turn that mess into your message? Because that's a blessing. Because I don't think you'd yeah, be as yeah. hungry as you are right now, though. For sure. I mean, um... You know, I just like never let it be a thing to like hold me back. I feel like a lot of people, especially in society, like really want to see somebody with like a disability not succeed in a way. Cause you know, people, there's a lot of people who like, you know, make fun of like others, whether it's like people with like autism or, you know, people who just uh, are in wheelchairs. You know, there's a lot of people who tend to make fun of these people because they can't like ever relate to them. I was one that was very sympathetic to these types of people because you know I have I have like a physical, you know, disability, but also the thing with disability is like um I just really don't like care about it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. just like never like well Focus like on. I don't wake up and think every day, "Oh my god, I have something that's holding me back." Like I just kind of live my life and like I already know like I can do what I want if I just like put my mind to it. So like yeah. I never let any like but you're also grateful. That. You're grateful that you have the ability to walk, talk. Yeah, no, I'm grateful. Like, you know, it could have been a lot worse, man. You know, like I could have, I could have, you know, had a, a different disability where I couldn't even be articulate or, or talk, you know? So I'm just grateful that like I'm able to like carry on my everyday, uh, you know, just as. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that don't have that, you know, they don't, ha they, they're not, you know, they, they have, an able mind, able body, able soul, but then the problem is they still take it for granted as yeah. if it's gonna be there forever. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think I also like learned at a young age, cause I went blind on my left eye when I was nine. And like after that experience, like everything that I had, whether it was like being able to breathe fresh air or even still being able to see out of one eye, I was like very grateful for because like, I didn't realize like what I had until it was gone, you know? So like everything in life I'm just is a blessing. And um, a lot of people focus on the negative, but because of all the experiences I went through when I was a kid, I only see the positive because I've been through so much negative in my life, like all the way to the deep end of like losing vision, you know, losing like, you know, certain things in my life I'll never get back. I just kind of realized that there's like no room to be negative and I, I've already, like, already hit like rock bottom, you yeah. know? So like, like I, I kind of like more to hit, you know. What yeah, I mean? so there's like nothing else I can do yeah. except for just like be positive from here, because like if you just dwell on like everything bad in life, you're just only gonna attract that bad energy, and you're never gonna be successful. 
So, so what yeah. is your best approach um, you know, to overcoming the fear you went through during your surgery? Um, you know, because you've defined you know, success through your surgery, but at the same time, you've taken your career to a whole different level with you know, making funny videos and uploading them on YouTube, etc. Yeah, I think definitely, you know, when I went through this operation uh, on my ankles and hips, I had an ankle hip osteotomy. What age were you? I was, so this is like when I was like 14. Okay. And this is, I actually became successful because I made a video while recovering. I was wheelchair bound for a year and um, I made a video because I was born and it blew up. So I actually became successful because I made a video while recovering. I was wheelchair bound for a year and um, I made a video because I was born and it blew up. So I started to blow up like right when my, uh, I was able to start walking again and I was recovering. And then like I, the day that like I was able to walk again after that leg surgery, after a year I had had like 100K followers and then boom, I was traveling. I was doing all this stuff. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I got to capitalize now. Like I'm, I'm done with the recovery. I, like I'm starting to get like famous online. I just got to keep pushing it, you know? So I just kind of just kept it going ever since. I just like didn't look back. I just kept going and so, seeing how so far So talk I us through it. You go through this operation. You're in your wheelchair right now. What <laughs> motivates you to create this video did you have do you even think that you're gonna blow up did you think you're gonna have a hundred thousand followers yeah um i mean growing up i dealt with a lot of depression because of like everything i was presented with so the best way i could like uh deal with that depression was through comedy so i was just very because i remember that year where i couldn't like really walk for a year i was very isolated so i kind of felt like i was in prison you know I could barely, like, I couldn't even walk to go to the bathroom. Like, I had to have my parents, like, help me get there. You know, it was a very humiliating and, and dark 14, time right? for me. Yeah, this was, like, when I was 14. And it was also a very boring time because um, I really had, like, no contact with anyone else because I couldn't go out. So I remember just in that state of mind, I was very uh, bored, isolated, and depressed. And the one thing that could kind of, like, get me out of that whole, like, pit was, like, doing something funny. So I just made like a funny viral video, but I didn't expect it to go viral. I just made it cause I was bored. And uh, like two months later it blew up. And then I was like, all right, I gotta take advantage of this. I can't just be like a one hit wonder, yeah. you know? So I was like, I'm just like, I knew, like I had the, um, I already had like the element of knowing how to make something funny. So as soon as I saw like one of the things I made starting to go viral, I'm like, okay. Like I just already knew what to do. I felt like, like I, I never like thought about it too hard. I just did stuff I found funny and it just kept blowing up. It's crazy how I see it happening over and over and over again. People go through the most amount of pain, generally take that pain and, and, and turn it into the most, into one of the biggest stories that the world's ever known and heard. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just over and over and over, the more pain you go through, the more adversity you go through, the more you start to blow up. It's like a slingshot. Yeah. You know, it's just continuously pulling back and then when you let go, it's game over. Yeah. Um, you know, living in USA, living in Los Angeles, land of opportunity, um, you know, would you say you have more of an advantage going out there and sh playing a video, putting a posting a video on YouTube and getting a few hundred thousand views versus the person that's living in Africa or living in Asia and don't, they don't really have that following. They really don't have access to YouTube and the internet speed is so slow it's all odds against them. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm just saying because there's certain people would be thinking, hey, should I move to LA to make the transition to be the next big Nick? Yeah. I mean, this is, I guess, some advice for people who like think they're going to move to LA and get famous. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Cause like I, I blew up when I wasn't living there. Me moving there boosted me even further to yeah. levels I could have never got. But you have to already have something that's working. You can't just move somewhere and have no plan B. You know what I mean? Like if you're plan A, if you don't even have a plan A where you're just like already blowing up, you know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's no point in trying to go out there to create your plan A and plan B. You should already have something going on for you and have a backup if you're not confident. But if you're confident, you, I, you don't need a plan B. I never had a plan B. I never, never thought of one. I never thought, oh, what if this all goes away? What am I gonna do? Because I'm just, I, it's never gonna go away. Yeah. Because I already know everything. Yeah, too many do. plans basically confuses people. Yeah. You don't know I which feel like that's a common misconception. People think you need to have a plan B to like 
succeed it's like if you know what you're gonna do is gonna make you successful having a plan b is kind of like doubting yourself in yeah. a way but you, you know? can have a secondary income on the sideline once you master your plan a definitely oh yeah, yeah. it's definitely good to have multiple sources of income but it's never good to like be like what if this doesn't work out because then you're just putting out the energy that you're not gonna be successful yeah so how did you overcome the internal pressure that most people uh don't have the manpower to change and now you're one of the most talented and popular YouTubers of, you know, of, of this time. Yeah, um, what do you mean by like manpower? So, you know, for example, when you're overcoming the internal pressure, internal meaning, you know, in your home, um, you know, there's pressure now. Your parents are pushing you and saying, hey, you know, I want you to become this accountant. I want you to become this doctor. I want you to become this lawyer. I don't want you to focus on being a sports star, YouTuber, etc. Yeah, um, I was, I'm definitely the first one in my family to break away from like, traditional like Indian parents of like doctor, lawyer and that's typical, or engineer. Eh? Yeah, like I'm I'm the first one out of my whole like generation of family to, to do that. Um, but also at the same time my parents didn't give me a hard time about it because I was already making money from it. Yeah. So it's like why they're gonna stop my revenue, you know? But like if I wasn't I'd pro they'd probably judge me for it, you know, but like I was already kinda proving to them that what I was doing was working for me financially. So they kind of just gave up on the dream of like me being a doctor. I remember when I was like a lot younger, they would like say they wanted us to be doctors, but like as we grew older, it was more of a joke. Cause like my parents are, are like a more westernized version of Indian parents when it comes to like, you have to do this, you know? But like my mom and dad were both, my dad wanted to be a doctor, but my mom was forced to be one. And uh, sometimes she feels like she missed out on what she really wanted to do in life because her parents kind of like, because you know how that's how Indian parents are. Yeah, like, without a doubt. You have no choice, you know? Uh, so it's so old school, man. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a very like stubborn way of thinking, I feel like. I think I think like a lot of Indian values, you look at it now. And, and you that's have good, though. Freedom. Yeah, yeah. Like I, so I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to kind of break away from like the stereotype. Just do whatever I want, you know? So let's take, let's take that into, um, you know, some mechanics because now we got, we're talking into YouTube. Yeah. Um, what was your first step to becoming a YouTuber? And whilst answering that, were there any mistakes or advice you would like to give on up and coming YouTubers? Like first step meaning, hey, you just walked into www.youtube.com. You created this account. What was your first step? Was it thinking before you made this video that went viral? Um, it, my main, honestly, you just gotta be consistent. And you just gotta do something where people are gonna like really like wanna watch the, it the whole way through, you know? It has to be entertaining, you have to be funny. Or you have to just make content that interests people, whether it's like tutorials or science videos. But I mean, I'm, I'm mostly into like the funny videos on YouTube. You have to make something that no one's ever done before. There's a lot of people on YouTube making videos, but only a few percent of them actually get big. So. If you believe in yourself and you know what you're doing, being a YouTuber is what you want to do, then find a way you're going to be different from everyone else. Because I see a lot of people doing the same shit as like every other YouTuber now. Yeah. And it's like not good. Completely. And you got to innovate. I mean, it's, yeah. um, you know, just being in that same circle of making funny videos, you got to innovate. Like we just talked about it today. You're on the brink of shooting something. Um, is there a lot of, you know, work ethic that are, you know, behind the scenes before you even, that people don't really see? Um, is there a lot of work ethics that you need to put into your blogs? Um, my vlogs were a lot easier, but now that I'm doing like these prank videos, it's a lot of work. Um, because I have to like go to like a bunch of different stores. It takes all day, sometimes like three days. And yeah, watch the like best vibe, best yeah. vibe video. That was ridiculous, man. Yeah, that was a that was a yeah. fun one to shoot. How, how many how many stores did you go to? Because most people don't know that. Yeah, I went to like nine. Nine stores. And like you'll be surprised how spread out they are. Yeah. You know, it's like a whole mission to try and like go to all of these places, and then you know I get, you have to like I have to be very sneaky. Like I'll put on a jacket over the uniform, and then like I'll put the jacket in a backpack, and then you know. Uh, Usually we'll just like have the uh, camera like be very far away to where no one can see. But it's a whole process and to be honest, those videos can be a little scary because I've almost been arrested on some of them. Um, but <laughs> by the way, yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't uh, get arrested kids. But uh, yeah, those are like a lot scarier than the vlogs, but I get like a bigger adrenal adrenaline rush doing it. So I like it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was watching that last night and um, 
I just saw you getting kicked out of, you know, Best Buy after Best Buy after Best Buy, a few stores, you and your friend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was watching that last night and um, I just saw you getting kicked out of, you know, Best Buy after Best Buy after Best Buy, a few stores, you and your friend. Yeah, yeah. So your first video um, was when you were at home, home alone and you just want to let loose. Yeah. Um, what is the message <laughs> behind that video? Uh, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> you watch it though. You want to watch it? Yeah. You want to see what got me big? Yeah. This stupid video. Look at this. Let's check this out. This is so fucking. It's so stupid. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah go for it. No, it's, go for it. Oh, it's so fucking stupid, man. Hold on. How, I saw many, how many views did it get? Dude, it got like. um... Where's my video section? Dude, it has like. Uh, I think at the time it had like 700,000 likes 700, and like 500,000 rewinds or something like that. That's crazy. And it was so f stupid, man. Like, I, I didn't think this would, this is the reason why I'm at where I'm at today. I was 14. I had these braces and everything. Anyone home? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Bitch, ass, pussy, bitch, ass, fuck, fuck. So stupid. I was just a 14-year-old kid swearing because my parents weren't home and I made it into this little song. And that went viral. And that blew up. And dude, like that's a video you make and you don't expect it to get big, you know? Exactly. It's just stupid, bro. Like I, I, I had nothing else to do. I'm literally... So did you upload that on YouTube or social media? No, Vine, media? Vine. Vine. Yeah, it blew up on Vine. And it was like, it's just, it's so dumb. I don't know how that got big, but I, I'm thankful for it. Because like, that's like, yeah, that was the foundation for like everything. That's crazy. And it's, you know? and, so, and you know, that's what entrepreneurs can relate to with business, they create an idea, might be the stupidest idea out there. So stupid. And it blows up. Think about social media, think about Facebook, think about Instagram, it yeah. blew up. No yeah. one really you know, thought about it blowing up, but it just did. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has inspirations. Everyone's motivated by someone. Who's your inspiration right now in the industry of where you're at? Um, industry of like the whole like, YouTube, YouTube stuff? Com comedy. Dude, actually, to be honest, I don't have any inspirations. Yeah. What yeah. do you? What motivates you? What drives you? Uh, honestly, this is gonna sound a little narcissistic, but myself, yeah. <laughs> like just knowing I am who I am and what I'm doing is working drives me to do it more. You know? Yeah. Like I don't have like any like people I look up to. You know? Because like I, I feel like looking up to people is a waste of time. But at a young age. At a because young because age, there's a lot of people that might look up to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like, I feel like looking up to people when you're already do, like at this level of, you know, yeah. of what I'm doing is a waste of time. But definitely, if you're like starting off and you're trying to like find yourself, looking up to people is a great thing. But like now, I don't look up to people. I used to though. Um, when I was younger, watching YouTube, I used to look up to these YouTubers, Smosh, and I actually did a video with one of the guys last week, which was cool. Yeah. Um, I used to look up to this guy named Ray William Johnson, uh, and then like in terms of like music artists, I used to look up to Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Dr. Dre, Royce the Five Nine, um, who else? Uh, Tupac. So like I had idols for sure. I right? had people I looked up to, but now that I'm older and I'm like just doing what I'm doing, I don't really like look up to people anymore. So tell us about your boom on Vine. Uh, why was Vine such as me, uh, such an effective channel for you? And do you miss not being able to use that uh, that platform? Um, Vine, yeah, Vine was very effective for me for sure. Uh, it opened the gates of me doing everything in life from YouTube to Instagram to Twitter. Um, and then, uh, what was your other question? Sorry. So, you know, um, was it an effective channel for you? Because obviously Vine's not around right now. Yeah, no, Vi yeah, Vine was very effective. It gave me opportunities to everything I'm doing. I mean, if I wasn't on Vine, I wouldn't be here doing this video. So what's crazy is just a few days ago, I'm not sure if you, um, you've, you actually experienced what happened with Instagram. There was like a pause. You couldn't refresh your timeline. You couldn't upload anything on, on your Instagram stories and your post. Um, it's crazy because, you know, what would influencers be today without social media? That makes me think twice. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you get someone like yourself who went through a lot of adversity with Vine when you had, uh, what was it, like 2.9 million subscribers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 2.9 million subscribers, you put your heart and soul into it. Yeah, Vine yeah, gets shut away. down, yeah. and next thing you know, you have to restart this from ground level on yep. YouTube. Yep. So, you know, there's a lot of people right now that are either starting off from ground level, they haven't experienced that, you know, that peak and then go back down, or the pinnacle and go back down to ground level. Yeah. Um, you know, how did you make that shift? How did you restart that day? 
Yeah, um, so I actually saw a Vine like dying a year before I did, so kind of like tried to make content on other platforms. First I started with Facebook, then And were you just cross, YouTube. You were just crossing cross, it off like- I was cross promoting yeah. everything. Um, but like when it really shut down, I still like wasn't as big as I was on Vine. So I remember like there was like a feeling of uncertainty where I was like, oh no, I lost my legacy. Like, will I ever come back? And I had, I think I had like one thought of doubt. And then I was like, wait, fuck that. Why am I doubting myself? I already yeah. did this shit. I'll just, I can just do it again. You can do it again. And then I just did it again. Yeah. So talk to us about monetizing a YouTube channel. Most people, um, <laughs> they think and they feel like most of, you know, an individual's revenue, a YouTuber's revenue comes from, you know, YouTube videos, subscribers, and even views. They don't really realize where the real finances are, where the real uh, income generating is. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, what, what you're making, and I don't want to disclose it, but, you know, for someone that wants to become a YouTuber today, what advice would you give for, to, to them? Uh, like financially? Financial advice, because when it's time to earn the income and then they realize, hey, I'm not really getting paid what I thought I was. Yeah. Because they look at people like Jake and they look at people, um, you know, obviously like uh, Christian, etc. And they see there's big money in it. Yeah. Until, you know, they really and truly realize these guys are also doing other things on the sideline. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a heartbreaker to some of you guys. But if you're doing YouTube to make money, you're not going to make any, like, like barely any money. Because right now, uh, YouTube's like how the economy was a few years ago. Like, it's just crashing in terms of revenue. But like... Um, and I don't think it can, it will ever really recover to what it used to be. If you did YouTube like two years ago, it was lit. Like you were getting bread, but like now you want to focus on like, yeah, like if you blow up on YouTube, it'll lead you to opportunities to making money, but you had to find a way to properly monetize outside of one platform. And that obviously transitions into your music because now you've got this following a million subscribers on YouTube, a million subscribers on Instagram. Um, how did you get into rap music? So I've always, I've always like been a fan of rap ever since I was like nine. Um, and like I always like love singing, you know? Like I take like singing lessons when I was like 13 to 15. And uh, but then like that was it, you know? And then I did like theater here and there. So I was very like, I was always into the arts. I used to always like love singing, you know? Like I take like singing lessons when I was like 13 to 15. And uh, but then like that was it, you know? And then I did like theater here and there. So I was very like, I was always into the arts and into like entertainment. I think when I really started to like, like doing rap was like maybe a year ago, but like I was still experimenting and I was still learning how to make like a good song. So I went through like a four month period where like I would lock myself in my apartment and I bought a bunch of equipment, studio equipment, and I was like trying to figure out how to make good music, you know? Cause yeah. I was like, I want to do this like for real. <laughs> like I want to do it, it's just like a gimmick. So yeah, bro, I spent like four months just in my room. I didn't really talk to anybody during those few months. You write your own lyrics? Yeah, I write out my own lyrics. So I was also trying to learn how to make good lyrics, you know? So yeah. I like really just, yeah, like now- That's just this expressing is, yourself, right? Yeah, this is a Big Nick exclusive, no one knows this. So I locked myself in my room, like, you know, like I would go out, you know, here and there, but like pretty much all day I'd be in my bedroom with my little home studio. I had like a mic held by like a pencil with like tape on it. Like it was a super ghetto looking studio, but I made some good music there, man. But like- Anyone notice you? You have any, um, you tie down to a record label? Uh, I've had a bunch of labels like hit me up, but um, my advice to everyone out there is stay independent until like you have a deal that's like really gonna benefit you. It's um, a win-win for you. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, <laughs> in those four months, I learned really fast when I try and tackle a new thing, just like YouTube and Instagram, you know? So like music, it was pretty easy to learn, but like it took a long time. And I went through these like four months of frustration where I'm like, fuck, this is not sounding good. Like, why am I, why can't I just make, make good music yet? And then there was this one song that I made, uh, like after those four months, and I just made it like, just out of nowhere, out of just sheer boredom. Dude, everything, everything I make <laughs> is out of boredom, that's yeah. great. And I was just like, fuck man, like, I'm gonna try again today. I just kept trying and failing. Like I would, I would get beats online, I would buy like lease beats online, spin them on my program, and, they would just, and it would just wouldn't sound good. Like it just wasn't good, yeah. you know? And then I was like, I made one one day, and it was a banger, man. And I was like surprised, man. 
I was like, wait, what the, f like, what the fuck did I just do? Like, I just heard this beat, I downloaded it, and I made this song, and uh, yeah, man, I was just like, wow, did I really just make this? You know, and I sent it to this engineer, put some nice little touches on it, yeah, man, it was like, and then I got it back, and I'm like, wow, this is fucking good, man, I'm gonna, like, it's, been, it's like smooth sailing, bro, with that. Like, every time I go to the studio now, I always leave with, like, a hit. Like, I, I never, like, choke, I never, like, um, can't make something. You know, I went through this period where even though I was starting to make good music, yeah. it was hard for me to, like, go to the studio and, like, get a song done and it be done. And like, you the found your rhythm. Done. You found where you're at. Yeah, but then, like, uh, it got a lot easier, like, writing. The writing is very easy for me now. Like, it'll only take me, like, 20 minutes to, like, 30 minutes to write a song. Um, and then I'll, it'll take me, like, an hour to record max. So, so what's, yeah. the, what's the next level for you right now? Because you're 20 years old, I'm 25. Um, I know what it feels like to have a bit of success, mm -hmm. um, but I'm nowhere close to where I want to be, and neither are you. Yeah. Uh, what's the next level? What's the next five to ten years for Big Nick? Um, the next five, honestly, man, I, it's just really like towards my music, man, because I enjoy doing these videos, yeah. but um, music has more of like a, uh, I would say like a longevity in terms of like entertainment, and like I want to make something that's going to like stick with people. When people watch a video, once they laugh and they enjoy it, but I want to make something. I want to create content that's gonna, gonna play over and over. It's gonna last over forever, you know. Yeah. You listen to some songs from like 30 years ago, and people are still playing them in bars. I want that. I want that. I don't. I don't want like a quick. I'm gonna post. People like it, and then what's next? I want something that's gonna have substance and value, and something that people can really feel rather than just watch. Yeah. Are you big into personal development? Do you watch any? YouTube videos, listen to any podcasts or audios that inspires and motivates you to make the next video, make the next track? Um, not, no, not, not really. Not really. <laughs> so you're not into positivity? or No, I love positivity. Yeah. <laughs> like, positivity is key, man. Manifestation is key. When people can unlock that third layer of being able to manifest what they want to see and when people can like, really understand like, that energy is like what controls the universe. Oh, without a doubt then that's when you'll truly be successful, but it's a hidden layer that you're never taught. Yeah, my entire life is lived in, in, in the present, I mean, yeah. in, the, in, in the future. Yeah. I hate living in the past and, and present. It's like yeah. whatever you visualize is really and truly what you're gonna materialize. Whatever yeah. you think I'm, I'm about sure it. when you started your stuff, you probably were like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have a program, yeah. I'm gonna be successful. I'm sure you probably had these affirmations that you would tell yourself. Of course. Because, I mean, if you didn't, you wouldn't be where you're at. Exactly. You know, neither would I. Like yeah. I when I was 12, right, this is actually crazy, I forgot to add this. So I blew up when I was 14, but when I was 12, I'd be stressing out. I'd be like, Mom, I'm not famous yet. Fuck, like, what do I got to do? There's child actors that are famous. Yeah. Like, I'd be, I'd be pissed. Like, I, I don't know why I want to be famous so bad when I was, like, 12. But, like, I, I wouldn't say fuck to my mom at 12, yeah. but, like, that's the emotion I felt, you know? People probably think I'm, like, this, I'm, like yeah. horrible kid. No, but um, I was just like, Mom, like, I'm not famous, like I want to be in a movie already. She's like, give it time, you're only 12. <laughs> I'll be like, no mom, like now's the time. And people you should still have that mentality. About it. Yeah, you people knew, should have that mentality yeah, that now's the time. You were speaking into existence. Yeah, I spoke it into existence, which is crazy because like, I just realized that like a few months ago. I forgot I like had that mentality. My mom would told, told me, she was like, And I sometimes when you, were you might kid. need to go back to the basics for your music career. Yep. Like, hey, I'm not blowing up yet. I'm not famous yet in that career, in that industry. Yeah, I, you know, every day I don't have, my goal, man, is to just have a platinum record, man, and I'm going to do it. I don't doubt it. I'm going to do it because I, every, everything I'm doing is working, and everything I'm going to keep doing is working, and everything's just been forward from here. Yeah, and sooner or later you'll come to South Africa, we'll do a collaboration on that. Yeah, and, let's uh, do we'll it, And we'll get man. you on the stages around the world. Big Nick, thank you so much for joining me on the Millionaire Student Show. I appreciate Thanks it, Thanks for having me, man. It's been an honor to be with one of the GOATs. So, yeah, guys, make sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and then leave a comment. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, I'm just trying to get you just some ended it for me. On. Let's go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Peace, guys. We're on the Millionaire Student Show with Sash and Govinda, and uh, today's guest is Tommy Chiabra. And uh, is it correct pronunciation? Correct. Yeah. Very Italian. So um, yeah, trying to get.